Okay, while we're talking about positivity, and we've talked about pictures in, in your mind, uh, let's continue this for a moment because I think it's very, very important. Think of the last time you dreamt. Not that you remember the exact dream, but think, did you dream in letters and words and sentences and paragraphs? Or did you dream in images, in visions, in illusions? Well, that's how we all dreamt, because that's how the brain works. The brain does not remember words. It remembers visions. So, for example, when we say to a youngster, don't run, the kid does not visualize the don't, the word. He visualizes what comes after it. So, so often we tell kids what not to do, and without even realizing it, we're suggesting that they do the exact opposite of what we want. Don't look at your neighbor's paper. By the way, speaking about looking at your neighbor's paper, just for a moment, here's a little exercise. Count the number of rooms where you reside, in your condo or your home, your apartment. Now, chances are, as I have observed hundreds of people do this, the eyes do not go down. The eyes go to the upper left or often to the upper right. But when we tell our youngsters during a test, keep your eyes down, it's counterproductive to how the brain operates. Now, you may say keep your eyes on your own paper, but remove yourself from the idea of saying don't. Always talk to kids what you want them to do. I witnessed this. I, was almost, I almost burst out laughing. I was in an airport, and there was a youngster, maybe four or five years old, and he started to run down the passageway onto the airplane. And the official there stopped him, and he says, don't do it. And sure enough, about three minutes later, the kid started to run down the aisle again. He would have been much better saying something like, this is for adults. The point, remember, write it down. Always talk to people what you want, not what you don't want. So, for example, in a parent session, because I speak to parents also, this was in Wisconsin, on the evening when I talked to parents before, the day later when I spoke to the teachers, I mentioned the idea about wetting bed. The kid is, is still wetting his bed, and the mother says, as she puts him to sleep, don't wet your bed tonight. Are you with me what the brain just conjured up? The next day, the superintendent of schools, pretty young guy, and he came to me before I started to talk to the teachers, and he said, Marv, I've got to tell you what happened. Last night, I put my youngster to bed, because he's still wetting his bed, and we did the usual thing. Uh, he went to the uh, potty, and we talked for a little while, and the last thing he heard me say before he went to sleep was, let's see if we can keep the bed dry tonight. He came into the kitchen this morning as I was making breakfast. He says, Daddy, 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 look at my bed. My bed is dry. It is so simple and so important. Always talk to people what you want them to do, not what you don't want them to do. I walk into a middle school in the office. Twelve rules, all don't, 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 don't. Again, if you want a person to do something, you want to have them feel good. If you feel bad, chances are you're not going to do what the, what the teacher would like you to do. People do good when they feel good, not when they feel bad. I mean, even the slowest salesperson knows enough not to alienate the prospective customer. And unfortunately, we teachers do it so often. So ask yourself, when I talk to my students, are they going to perceive it in a negative or in a positive way? And the same thing goes with your rules. Take a look at them. 
have them all positive. It's, again, it is so simple. People do good when they feel good. You cannot disassociate one's feeling from one's cognition. Be aware of that, and you will find that you will receive so much more joy in working with your kids. Now that we have learned the way the brain works and the danger of using the word don't, let's reflect. Make a list of the directions that you gave your students this week. Write down the circumstances and the student. Now in the right-hand column, write down what you could have said that would reinforce a positive action. 